Hi, everyone. It's still February 8, 2020. It is truly, well, I want to say unbelievable. Uh, it's not unbelievable because we've been watching the increasing destruction via weather used as a weapon. There are so many areas that are being hit. And I have more in a different area in Oregon and Canada, Australia, New Zealand. Bad. And I really think that they are targeting roads, destroying an awful lot of roads. There are people trapped in areas. It's okay. Oregon. People in the South Sound forced to evacuate as floodwaters continue to rise there. Tacoma Power reduced the flow from the Le Grand Dam, but for many, it was just too late. Kara 7 South Sound reporter Shelby Miller is live in the Nisqually Valley tonight. Shelby? Monique, the rain is falling now and the floodwaters have been rising all day. Right now, I am literally sitting in a boat in the parking lot that I was talking to you from earlier today. And the water here is at least two feet deep behind me. Cars are completely covered. And emergency management says the river will not start receding until at least nine o'clock tonight. Streets are swamped. Homes are underwater and cars are completely submerged. Floodwaters from the Nisqually River continue to rise and they're downright dangerous. This will take you away. You see that current? That current's stronger than you think you are. Thurston County's water rescue team hauled out their emergency rescue boat, suited up, and waded through floodwaters that were at least four feet tall, rescuing people trapped inside their homes. These brave men and women aren't just saving people, they're taking care of stranded pets too. We had uh, a number of uh, puppies and dogs and a couple goats that we rescued. The water was so high, we had to hitch a ride in the county's armored SWAT vehicle. They drove us to Durgin Road, where sections are completely submerged. The water was up to this man's chest. Not far away, we spotted people using boats to get around town. It's sad, people are losing their homes, like there's homes right there. There's a school down here. There are children who are losing their education. There are people devastated and losing lots of things that they cannot replace. Amanda Rochelle's home is ruined. Couches are done. Uh, kitchen's done. Appliances are done. She watched from the road as her husband and friend carried out bags of their belongings. She never thought the flooding would be this bad. She's thankful her family got out in the nick of time. I'm not a crier, but I've definitely been crying. I haven't slept. My emotions are so just hardcore. And we keep on telling each other, it's just a structure. It's just a home. We can rebuild. Our home is with us. Okay. BC, Canada. Squamish Valley Road, one of the many roads across the province that had to be shut down because of flooding. We can see some large puddles still on the side of the road. And as I mentioned, not the only one. We've been closely monitoring what's happening in the Fraser Valley as the only road in and out of the Sasquatch. Ski resort has been closed because of flooding there, leaving hundreds of people stranded. Right now, the only way to get them in and out is by helicopter, but BC Transportation says they are working to open the road in the area to single lane traffic. However, they did say it's going to take several days to repair it completely. But it wasn't just rain that shut down the roads, also snowfall. In fact, uh, just north of Whistler or along the Sea to Sky near Pemberton had to be closed because of avalanche control on Friday. It was just an absolute mess and we're not in the clear just yet. I know it looks pretty clear today, but Tuesday we are seeing some more heavy snow moving in, about 30 centimeters for the Squamish area, 5 to 15 for the lower mainland. Right now, those avalanche concerns have been lowered to considerable along Sea to Sky, but we're keeping a close eye on them with the additional snow that we're expecting to move in on Tuesday. A chance for those to rise back again to that high level, a chance for some more highway closures for some avalanche control, and of course, we will be monitoring it all and bringing you all the latest. And I have shown you 
the manufacturing of that cloud. Oh boy, from the nanobots and it's oh, thousands of miles long in the Pacific and it makes its way into Canada and then they push it down into Washington and Oregon. But for now, let's turn our attentions to British Columbia because hundreds of people remain stranded at a ski hill in the Fraser Valley. They've been stuck since Friday at Sasquatch Mountain Resort, a mudslide cutting off the main road leading up to the site. Now, despite those circumstances, a small number of people have been able to get away by taking to the skies. And for more, let's bring in Jacqueline Hansen as she's covering the very latest in this story. So, Jacqueline, up. Oh. E-Resort and the Hemlock Valley community. Um, so the Okay, I will link below to everything. If you happen to live in this area and want to see the whole thing, click on the link below. But look at what is happening to the roads. And yes, this is not Mother Nature, but man. Causing this unbelievable, unbelievable destruction. New Zealand. New Zealand got hit hard. New Zealand, hundreds of people, including many tourists, have been evacuated after heavy rains caused severe flooding. So Ian Lee is following this and much more from London. Ian, what can you tell us? Uh, good morning, Laura. Yes, heavy rains have led to severe flooding and a state of emergency there. <clears throat> Earlier today, New Zealand authorities evacuated more than 2,000 people from their homes and farms in the south of the country. In other parts, rivers and mudslides destroyed roads and stranded hundreds of tourists. Emergency crews worked around the clock to rescue them by helicopter. In the past 60 hours, more than three feet of rain has pounded the region. Some areas could see another foot of rain before it's expected to let up later today. Next, a court in Lesotho today formally charged the wife. At least 400 people are trapped in Milford Sound after heavy floodings cut off the only road out. A state of emergency has been declared in Milford, Tiano and Manapuri. Locals say they have never seen rain like it. Southland Mayor Gary Tong joins me now. Gary, have you seen anything like this before? No, I haven't, Lisa. It's um, certainly crept up this one, that's for sure. What is it like? Um, it's pretty devastating in, in that area. We're, we're talking the whole corridor from about Cascade Creek right through to Milford, including the, including the Hollyford, uh, and some parts of it are yet um, are unknown. We've got helicopters now um, looking in the area just to ascertain who may be trapped where or what. Um, it's a pretty intense at the moment. The team are doing a fantastic job. So at this point, how many people do you think are trapped and where are they? Uh, so we've got, uh, t just touching on uh, 400 in the Milford and Hollyford um, areas. And that, that is the figure that is on the table. I can see now about 402. So um, we're, we're pretty sure that we've got it. But as I say, um, other figures come and go. Some people have been airlifted out of some of the areas. So um, that's good to see. So... It's, you know, <laughs> look at this. Well, this is New Zealand too. Southland is New Zealand, yes. I um, believe that people are coping extremely well under the circumstances. That uh, meter of rain fell mostly in the headwaters of our local rivers. Uh, so we didn't get too much rain down on the coast, but there was a huge amount of water in terms of volume came particularly down the Matara River from its catchment and um, threatened to flood Gore, Matara and um, Wyndham Townships. Fortunately, no floodbacks held. We didn't get overtopping and uh, there were no washouts. So we're pleased we were wrong about that, but we had to do the evacuation 
because um, it was very likely that there would be um, more serious flooding in the towns. Does that mean then that uh, the damage may be potentially less than what you were initially concerned about? Well, the damage, the damage to the towns and the um, houses and buildings in there is much less than it might have been. If, uh, if the flood bank had gone, then that could have been uh, what you would might call a disaster. Uh, but it didn't. That didn't happen. There was water in some houses in Gore and, and Matara. Uh, Wyndham escaped pretty much unscathed. When we were, the information we had, we were sure that it was going to flood. So um, we were wrong, and I'm glad we are. But that was a very good result. So we've had no one that we know of has been injured or hurt. However, there's quite a lot of damage to infrastructure in our roads and our bridges. There's lots of closed roads. There's a number of bridges uh, have been damaged. And so uh, access to a lot of areas is restricted. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. The ideas around how much this may cost and those 2,400 evacuees, I understand some of them are returning home. Any idea when everyone will be able to go home? No, um, no idea. We've, we've got the people of Wyndham have been told that if they can, they can go home now. Gore residents were told last night that they can go home. I suppose the big issue really will be the rural areas, like the farmers. There are huge yep. Look at this. Look at these roads. That's not caused by rain. Sorry. It's not caused by rain. This is caused by frequencies. And if they want you out of an area, then they're going to do an awful lot of damage to that area. But look how split it is you know, right in the middle. Um, you know, huge sections taken out. Sorry, this is not water damage. Yeah. It's a fire. Reprieve? Australia is experiencing a reprieve from devastating bushfires in the form of floods. Heavy rains hit the eastern states on Thursday as a tropical cyclone looms over the country's northwest this weekend. The Bureau of Meteorology has issued severe thunderstorm and flood warnings. Rainfall is expected to continue for several days. The wet weather has helped slow down some of the country's most damaging wildfires. However, officials warned the threat was not yet over. Sixty fires are still burning across New South Wales and Victoria. More than 11.7 million hectares of land and billions of wild lives have been destroyed since September. Okay. Mm. Well, apparently, you had a tropical cyclone. And that was manufactured, and I will show you. And it's very obvious, very obvious.
Well, I'm surprised those trees actually, uh, well, they stood up to that kind of wind. But yeah, New Zealand and Canada and Washington and Oregon and, well, pretty much the eastern states, oh wait, several Gulf states, and it's getting worse, guys. It is definitely getting worse. I mean, when you see this, and it's happening, oh, wait a second, Storm Kira, UK, well, haven't... You were supposed to get hit this weekend, you guys, in the UK, Ireland. Um, how are you guys doing? I hope you're okay. Uh, it, there's so many areas now. Simultaneously, this, this stuff is going on. Tropical cyclone Damien. Damien, really? Of winds and heavy rain have lashed the northwest of Western Australia after tropical cyclone Damien crossed the coastline. <laughs> a red alert is still in place for parts of the Pilbara. Residents are told to stay indoors until the all clear is declared. A wet and wild day as Pilbara locals waited for Damien to arrive. The Category 3 cyclone hit the coastline near Dampier late on Saturday afternoon, bringing destructive winds up to 220 kilometres an hour near the eye of the storm and dumping rain over the region. But further falls of over 50 millimetres since then. Those falls will continue as the cyclone makes its way further to the south. And on top of that, there is the risk of a dangerous storm surge through the area as well. A red alert was declared on Friday night. Locals told to stay inside, keep away from doors and windows, and not to venture outside until authorities gave the all clear. Oh, would you... mm. Two women have had to scramble through the window of their four-wheel drive in a frantic escape as it sank in floodwaters in the state's north. They had checked local websites which said the road was safe, but suddenly found the vehicle filling with water, a driver behind filming their ordeal. This is the moment when two lives are hanging on a thread. A woman and her niece scrambling clear of their car on a flooded strip of road on the way to Nimbin in the state's far north. That is so bad. <gasps> oh my... It's gone. It's literally gone. Jill Sutherland and her 30-year-old niece Hannah are lucky to be alive. They had no idea the water was so deep. Within 10 seconds 15 seconds we knew we were in trouble the water started coming up through our feet it filled tipped and went down it was pretty scary their ordeal was filmed by a car coming behind how are people not getting that something's wrong here something's wrong how are they not getting this Faith and her husband Patrick are on the road, boat in tow. She fills us in on the plan and Patrick makes sure nothing is left out. We're going to be going down the river trying to get to my father's place down in Wyndham where the river's about to peak in a couple of hours. But he's on a, he's on a um, sheep farm there that borders the river. And the water, when I was talking to him a few hours ago, is only 20 metres from the house and he's got no way of getting out at the moment. So we need to go and try and get the boat down the river to see if he's all right. Keep an eye out for any stops that are stranded as well and try and see if we can help in any way. We've got our wire cutters on the boat, um, cut any fences if we need to. So you're going to be looking out for stock that might be in trouble, but the ultimate aim is to see if Dad is OK. And are, you, are you planning to uplift him, evacuate him? Uh, if we need to, yeah, we'll see, see how we go. He's a pretty stubborn farmer, doesn't want to leave, leave his house and leave his stock, so we'll just... Um, see how the situation is when we get a bit closer. He's got about 2,000 sheep, which he was still moving this morning to get them onto the higher ground. We've only sort of got one area on the farm um, where there's high ground, and his neighbour, um, who's a dairy farmer, he's got all his stock actually on the road now because the road is actually um, a little bit higher ground, um, and with it being blocked off at both ends, no traffic can get through anyway. So his stock are on the road um, to try and keep them safe because he's got no high ground either. So the 
Look at these straight lined clouds. Okay, so an awful lot of areas of Australia and New Zealand and Oh boy. We actually have 723 firefighters still uh, in the uh, in the field of operations. They're uh, they're dealing with 38 fires, 19 uncontained. But the rainfall has obviously providing some welcome relief to many uh, many of the uh, the bushfires that have been raging. There have been 13 uh, rescues, flood rescues, uh, which unfortunately has doubled since yesterday. There are only six uh, this time yesterday. There's been uh, 13 now. Now, that says to me that the community is just not taking seriously. Uh, now, I am going to say, did you listen to that woman, the aunt and the niece? They checked to make sure that the road was clear and it was safe before they got in their car. And within 10 seconds, suddenly, their car is being swallowed up. Something else is happening. And I'm tired of listening to these people, uh, whatever, these officials, talk like all these people are just so irresponsible. And they're just not listening to authority uh, the authorities, and you got to listen to the authorities. And yeah. Weather is now a weapon. So you never know what's going to happen. You don't know what is going to happen. This I took on the 4th. And again, the time is... Uh, from the United States, Eastern Standard Time. So on the 4th of February, and it was at 7.06, so I guess that's uh, 7.06 p.m. It's about little after noon. They make cyclones in this area often. I see it. They're working it. And on the 4th, they were already working it. Now, this is not a natural cyclone. This is what they put together. They put together for your tropical cyclone, Damien. And I've seen this before. I've seen they manufacture what looks like they're trying to put together a cyclone right off the coast, right off your east coast of Australia. And then some, well, they just uh, dismantled themselves. This is obviously not a natural cyclone. This was on the 5th at 10.43 p.m. So, what, 2.43 p.m. on the 6th for you guys? Look at this. Now, we've got some kind of wave going on. This is outside your tropical cyclone. So for you, yeah, the sixth. Look at how the air masses are moving in different directions. <laughs> Look at this nanobot that just, well, yeah, forms into cloud. 
This is, okay, Tropical Cyclone Damien. That's right. Listen to your friggin' authority and figures, your experts, your meteorologists. All of this creation of man, all of this artificial. And, well, you have some very strange things happening. Uh, pretty much all the time. Off the coast of Australia and inside. Now, this spits out your nanobots spitting it out. But all of these lines, those are nanobots. Yes, nanotechnology is being used for our fabulous weather. That's destroying a lot of people. Looking at this, anyone that has any brain cell left would recognize that this is not natural. Look at how this, the cloud being made on the West Coast, well, this thing blew up. It's really pretty big now, but it was pretty big on the 7th at 337 a.m. So, say about 737 on the 8th, your time. Look at the air masses going in opposite directions. Yeah, it's, uh, look at this. You have cloud that is just kind of being moved over and then you have these nanobots you can see the creation of the nanobots and the creation of cloud. And that's what you're seeing. Manufactured cloud. Nanotechnology at work. All over. You know, these lines that you see all over. And look at this thing, which they're calling Tropical Cyclone Damien. You can see it levels off, which means frequencies are hitting it. Weird, weird, weird. But more cloud is being created inland. But wow, now this this is really interesting. <laughs> All right. So you got an air mass going up. You got an air mass coming down. You got an air mass, you know, going east, doing west, and and then you have a nanobot arrow shooting across, just shooting across, and it, it's. Well, I am, you know, walking the road less traveled. I'm flying the atmosphere less traveled. Really, Mrs. Cloud? God. Well, it's pretty obvious. Something's very wrong here. More and more people get destroyed, more animals. Uh, the roads that they are just, just smashing up. Yeah, they have a target date, 2030. And they will be increasing every, all agendas will be increased all agendas. Please tell me, you know that this is not natural. Please, please, could you leave a comment, please? 
You know, I bet you guys, if you showed this to somebody, I bet they wouldn't even take it in. Those who are so hardened you know, that they can't open you know, their minds even to have a conversation, I bet they would not even take it in. They would probably roll their eyes and just walk away from you. But clearly, something else is taking place in our atmosphere. All of the nanobots at work. And <laughs> really, all of these evenly spaced lines Nope, it's not real. All of these nanobots, our atmosphere is loaded with nanobots. And I have a playlist on my Never Lose Truth 2, the number two, space, Kafka, nanotechnology. And it explains, and I provide evidence that yes, man is using a weather machine to create this. And this is a weapon. This is a bomb that they are hitting you with. Tropical Cyclone Damien. Creation of man. Look at all of these nanobots. And, well, it's grown. It's, it's taken over, you know, a huge portion of Australia. Really? You're going to tell me that this, that this is a natural cyclone? Oh, I hope you don't. But if you do, be glad that we're in the cyber world and you're not in my real life. Whole construction of cloud, a cloud strip, uh, all of these evenly spaced lines going right on down the coast. Here you gotta, well, let's just bring in the nano bots and create more and more cloud. All of these are nanobots. And yes, they, they send and receive data to somebody operating a super computer that somebody is putting in the data for these nanobots. Yeah, they literally give them coordinates and move on. Soldiers, move on. But this is very weird. Some of these nanobots, I believe, are releasing, releasing something. But all this gray, in the cloud, in the manufactured cloud. Well, I'm going to post another video of what I captured today. And there's a lot that I've captured and that, I mean, it's obvious that it, not one bit of this is natural. So I guess this is smoke from one of the fires. 
though I couldn't really see the fire. I just see the nanobots flying around, or maybe the fire is right here, and the nanobots are instructed maybe to pick up the smoke. Yes, nanobots, nanotechnology, they can clean water, they can clean the air. But it does look like the nanobots are doing something with the smoke, and I've been you know, watching it for a while now. That is not tropical storm, uh, tropical cyclone, Damien. That is, you know, an act of war to bring about a lot of destruction. I'll go to, well, this was today for us here in the United States. For you, the uh, ninth you guys in Australia, look how, look at this creation on the west. I mean the east. No, yes, east. Um, look at this. Look how level it is. This is not Mother Nature. She doesn't make square clouds. It's really remarkable, all the different directions of the air masses. Well, I want to stick with the cyclone, so, um, I mean, God. All right. Look at this thing. So it's stretching a whole long way. But what is this line up here at the top? Really? The very obvious details. The ripples here in this outer band. Uh, nothing like, it, all right, nothing. But it's huge. As you can see, you have it going in different, the, the different air masses, but really you have a line of nanobots at the top. <sighs> no, sorry. This ain't the way cyclones work. And here is it now, so it's uh, the 8th. Well, sorry, the last video that I just showed you with the cyclone and the nano line at the top and it's stretching very, it was much better constructed than what you are looking at now, but that was at six my time on the eighth. This is still the eighth and it is 12, 13 a.m. No, so it's the ninth, sorry. And this is your cyclone, look. Well, I guess that line at top, at the top or the top of the cyclone, they're splitting up, they're divorcing. Said to hell with you. No, sorry. Nothing is, they don't even, all of this is nanobots, all of it, all of it, all of it. All of it. Oh, you got another cyclone going. All links are below.